The U.S. speaks out on Russia's delivery of nuclear weapons to Belarus. The White House says that the U.S. sees no reason to adjust its nuclear policy. The White House website quotes Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre in a press conference held on the afternoon of May 25, U.S. time stating that Washington has received information about the agreement regarding the nuclear weapons signed by Russia and Belarus earlier on the same day. We will definitely monitor the impacts of this. We have not seen any reason to adjust Washington's nuclear policy, nor have we seen any indications that Russia is preparing to use nuclear weapons from Belarus, affirmed Jean-Pierre. Currently, Russia has not made any comments on Ms. Jean-Pierre's statement. According to the TASS news agency, the statements by the White House press secretary were made just a few hours after Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu and his Belarusian counterpart Viktor Krenin signed an agreement on storing nuclear weapons from Moscow in Belarus. How much money did the U.S. and its allies pour into Ukraine? U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin stated that the U.S. and its allies have committed to providing a total of nearly $65 billion in military assistance to Kiev during the conflict with Russia. According to RT, Mr. Austin provided this estimate during the 12th meeting of the Defense Contact Group on Ukraine, which gathered 31 member countries of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, and a few other participating nations. The leadership of the U.S. Department of Defense declared that the sponsors for Ukraine remain united as before, and Washington is committed to standing by this Eastern European nation in the long term. Last week, President Joe Biden announced that the U.S. would support joint efforts with allies and partners to train Ukrainian pilots in using fourth-generation fighter jets, including F-16 fighters. We hope this training program will commence in the coming weeks, stated Mr. Austin. The official also added that in addition to providing modern fighter aircraft to Kiev, the U.S. is focusing on transferring air defense systems and additional weapons to Ukraine. Mr. Austin emphasized that air defense systems play a crucial role in protecting Ukraine's airspace and civilian infrastructure from Russian attacks. Russian officials have repeatedly insisted that Moscow's forces only target military or dual-purpose targets in neighboring countries. They also accuse Kiev of causing cities near the front lines to suffer from indiscriminate shelling and missile attacks, resulting in numerous casualties among the population since the outbreak of the conflict in late February last year. Moscow also warns the West against providing weapons assistance to Kiev, arguing that such actions will only prolong the conflict and cause further suffering for the Ukrainian civilians. President Biden declares that the U.S. will not default on its debt. President Biden and House Speaker McCarthy have come closer to reaching an agreement on spending cuts and raising the U.S. government's debt ceiling. According to Reuters, on May 25, local time, U.S. President Joe Biden held a press conference in the Rose Garden after a virtual negotiation with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. During the press conference, President Biden affirmed that the United States will not default on its debt and added that the negotiations have been productive. However, according to a statement from the White House, the two sides have not yet been able to agree on which areas of spending to cut. I believe that burdening the middle class and working class entirely is not a good idea, said President Biden. According to Reuters sources, Biden and McCarthy have come closer to an agreement on spending cuts and raising the debt ceiling to $31.4 trillion. This agreement is said to focus on the total amount of money the government can spend on programs such as housing and education, without breaking down the specific items. The proposed amounts from both sides are currently about $70 billion apart. House Speaker McCarthy stated that both the Republican and Democratic parties are racing against time to reach an agreement and avoid defaulting on the debt. Currently, it is unclear how much time the U.S. Congress has left to help the country avoid the risk of default. The U.S. Treasury Department had previously warned that the government would no longer have the ability to fulfill all payment obligations by June 1.